Hello, everybody. Um, in the last video, we discussed the constructor hierarchy, uh, class hierarchy, and the constructor and the two string method in the parent class. So now let me talk about the child classes. We have dog, uh, cat, bird, and reptile. These are the child classes. Let's look at dog. It extends animal, and we discussed the constructors already. Because it has one instance variable, I'm providing the setter and getter, accessor and mutator. And then in the animal class, we have a method called move and speak, right? So in the dog class, I, I'm overriding. This is overriding, right? I'm overriding that method. To override simply means you provide a different implementation in the child class from that of the parent class. And also overriding just to stress that it means your signature, your method name, your return type, everything is the same. It's exactly the same method, but you are changing the implementation. So look at my animal class. The implementation is this, right? and look at my dog class. So because dog is an animal, so I'm calling the animal classes move method and notice this is super.move. So you can use super to call the constructor like here. You can also use it to call the method in your super class. And this is what I'm doing. This method call, you can put it after the uh, other statements, that's fine, but not in the constructor. In the constructor, well, in the constructor, we said that it, it must be the first statement. I just put this statement as the first one. So I'm calling super.move and it will come here and I'll put this one, right? And then I have a specific uh, statement I want to make because I'm a dog. So I will say, my move is to charge forward aggressively. So that's the move method. And the same is true for speak. And you can see speak. I'm calling the super method. And uh, that is that. And I'm adding my specific move or uh, speech, and which is this, right? OK. And now let's talk about, uh, oh, let's look at bird. <clears throat> uh, for bird, I also, the implementation is almost the same. Uh, one instance variable, and I don't have no arg constructor. So when you construct a bird, you must give me a color. Versus dog, you can create a MP parameter a dog, <clears throat> but not for cat. I just did not implement them, or bird, or reptile. So if you look at the constructor, uh, if you look at the... Um, what did I want to say? If you look at the implementation of all of them, they are the same. So I will just use dog because we love dogs. I will just use this as an example. Okay, <clears throat> so we discussed these two methods. Now let's look at the two string method. Okay, the two string method, because two string is implemented in the super class, and remember, um, inheritance means this. When you construct a child, you always inherit the parent part. So a, a child really has two parts. One is the parent part, one is the child part. The child part is to add to the parent part. So um, that's why when you have a method you usually you call the super classes method because that is your parent and you have the same move, you have the same speech and also you add to it. So the same is true for two string. <clears throat> and this is how you uh, call the super classes two string. And this is usually always what you do. Return super dot two string, okay? So let's look at the string. Here in the two string uh, method of the animal class, you are returning, I am a warm blooded or cold blooded mammal, animal, right? So you first get that string and then I added a new line character. You go to the next line and you print out, I am a dog, 
and I am uh, whatever species that is. So that's the two string method. Once again, you call the super dot two string and add to it. Okay, that's the two string. Now, uh, and they are all the same. Okay, I did them all the same. Now let's look at this animal test. <clears throat> so this animal test, um, I created an animal. Okay, uh, let me talk about this first. This snake is a reference variable of animal. So it's a reference type, it's animal. That means the type of snake is animal. Okay, not, not reptile, but animal. But remember, reptile is an animal. That's why you can create an, uh, a reptile object. Let this animal reference point to the reptile object. Because you ask yourself, is reptile an animal? If that's true, you can write a statement like this. That means you are put, placing a reptile object. Uh, I should not say placing because it's a reference. So that means an animal reference is pointing to a reptile object. Okay. Now here, I specifically declared a bird um, um, reference variable. And of course, it can only reference a bird object. I cannot do dog here, right? That's not okay. Because a bird, a dog is not a bird. Uh, so for an animal, I can do a dog. Okay, I, I think I have it somewhere. I can do a new dog, um, new cat, I can do dog. And without that, right? It's a dog or I can give it a species, uh, you know, it's all okay because once again, a dog is a snake. So let me just go back to snake. Uh, we don't want to discriminate against snake. Okay. So uh, this, this is what that is. And then I'm creating an animal array list. Notice that uh, we learned array list already. So it's type, it's animal. What does this mean? Can I make this a uh, bird? Yes, I can. However, if I make a bird array list, a bird is a subclass of animal, then I cannot place a snake in it. I cannot place a dog in it, right? So if I make it a more generic, higher up type, Animal, then I can place a snake in it. I can, uh, not snake, but a reptile in it. I can place a bird, a dog, a cat, because all of them are animals. So uh, that's why I created this array list as an animal. And that's just the name, new array list. I don't have a size. So I'm adding this reptile object to it, this bird object to it. And now let's look at this statement. This is the for each loop, right? Uh, so you, you learned this already. So data type is animal, the reference type is animal. And this is just a variable. You can call it anything. And the colon, and this is the array list, right? Okay. Now I'm testing the two string method here, right? And then I'm calling move and uh, give it a new line character and calling speak. So this is two string, this is move, and this is speak. I'm calling all three methods here. I'm not calling the um, these two and because you already learned that in the last chapter. So let's see what this does. I, you know what, I'm going to just, uh, uh, just do this one at a time, okay. So if you look at this, I have two. And so I am a cold-blooded animal. What does, where does that, that statement come from? That's the two string method, that's this statement. And that statement specifically comes from the uh, animal two string, right? So when I create a bird, I, um, when I create a bird, uh, if you look at bird, uh, snake and bird, they are false. That means they are not uh, uh, warm-blooded uh, reptile and bird. 
they are all not warm-blooded or false. So I'm a cold-blooded animal. And that's the snake. That's the superclasses two string here. And then this statement is added. I'm a snake and my length is this much. Okay. <clears throat> the next statement, uh, new line, uh, oh, um, a uh, dot move. <laughs> so let's look at move. The move method in a reptile, the first, the first one is reptile. So the move method, super.move, which is this one, right? I am moving. So here I am moving. And, um, and then because it has this statement, and that's that statement. And then for the bird, it's the same thing. So we finished this part and new line character and animal speak. Uh, we did the speak. I am speaking. Uh, okay, here. And my move is, oh, that's the bird already. Uh, let me just make it larger so that you can see, right? Okay, I am cold-blooded animal and that there. This part is the snake. This is the two-string method. This is the move, a dot move. And this is a dot speak. And then this is going to the second animal because I have two, I added two. This is the uh, two string method. This is the move method. This is the speaking method. <clears throat> okay, so that's, the, uh, that's what this is doing. Okay, now I'm going to do an experiment. So I am going to comment this method out. Okay, uh, how do I do that? I just, just do this. Move. So if I do not implement move in my reptile class, this still works. But then which method does it call? It will go to the soup class because it cannot find move in the lower, in the subclass. So bird, I will do the same thing. Let's comment it out. Okay. So that you can see. Okay, let's go to animal test. I run it again, and you can see uh, for, for a snake, for a reptile, the two-string method is still the same, but then it's calling I am moving. It's calling the animal classes move method. I am moving because reptile does not have a move method. So um, what I want to say is if you look at this, this is an animal reference. This is a uh, pretty, a little bit difficult to understand. This is an animal reference. It's pointing to a reptile object. So when you call move, it will go to reptile to find the method first. If reptile has that method, it will bind itself to it. That's called dynamic binding, right? Um, and if doesn't have that method, we'll go to one level up, which is the superclass, and see if it has that method. And fortunately, animal has that method. And so it will um, execute this method. That's uh, dynamic binding. So when it compiles, okay, when it compiles, it looks for the move method in the animal, um, in the animal, um, us. And for this one, it looks for it uh, in the, oh, because, okay, now, because I added both of them into this animal array list, so both of them are treated as animal references, okay? I hope you understand that, because this array is an animal array list. So even though now this is a bird, but it's added to an animal array list. So it's treated as an animal. But when it compiles, it looks for that move method in the animal class because it's an animal reference. When it actually runs, executes, it looks for that method in the specific object class. So for this one, the first time it will look for it in reptile, it doesn't have it. So it will go one level up and have the use the animal. Um, move. And this is the same. The second time it's a bird, 
it looks for it in birth, but it doesn't have it, then it will go one level up to look for it. If animal doesn't does doesn't have move or speak, uh, move, then it won't compile. Okay. Uh, I think I want to stop here. Um, so we will continue with the next video.